speak about the film because I'm really curious. Oh, okay. So I'm Katayla Akpai. I was invited by, let's say, accidentally because I'm really an outsider, so I just enjoy to look at films, documentary films also. So I'm an art historian. I'm working at the Art History Institute of the Academy of the Sciences, and uh, my main topic is uh, Hungarian and international European art in the 60s and 70s. So, and back to the first question, how I like the film. I, uh, okay, maybe it's, uh, I adore the film. And, uh, uh, and first of all, because of its humor. Because the humor infiltrated even the saddest moments. And secondly, I followed somehow the career uh, of the artist of this uh, master of ceremony, Mr. Barbo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that uh, film, your film, evoke me really vivid memories of my childhood, because I grew up in Page, which is a mine town. And my mother, in her active years, used to be a teacher in a mine school. The name of the school was, wow, 39 Dondar. Who can have it translated? So it was the elementary school of the 39 Dondar. It's like a troop of mine workers, yeah. Marsh. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, uh, when I was free or I was started the school, sometimes I visited my mother's school. And I really enjoyed the strangeness of the school, already at the beginning, at the entrance, because the people, the students, or the little children told them that's good luck, good luck. And I was always <laughs> laughing about this. And my mother, she was exactly the woman in the beginning of the film, in the office, when she told them that I have to be nice to them, because they go every day down, one kilometer down, and they never know, or they don't know what will be the end of the day. So it was really an um, emotional moment for me, and I really long time ago that I didn't thought on this. So and this is the dramaturgy. So it, we followed really two lines: the the artistic activity of Mr. Barbu and the last days of the mine workers in the mine. So and I think it was such a tight rhythm, uh, measurement in the dramaturgy that it really kept the audience in, uh, in, in tension. So we heard really fresh feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And I would like to ask uh, how the Romanian audience uh, kept the film, so how was it uh, for them? Um, thank you for the feedback. Um, in Romania, the film is really successful. As I said in the beginning, it's uh, I will I've lost track of how many screenings we've had and in how many places and even um, for example I just um, because I will be in Cluj in the next period I just called one cinema in Cluj where the film had been shown but they showed it in uh, like during the day so not at good hours and I called them and I said hey I'm the director of Planeta Petrila. Uh, could we organize a screening while I am in Cluj? Because I know there are people who haven't seen it. And they said, but, but we screened it already, come on. And I said, no, I think there's, there are still people who haven't seen it because it was screened during the daytime, during the week, the, the weekdays. And the, the lady said, yeah, but that's just a documentary, so that's how we screen them. Um, and then I said, yeah, but trust me, I will bring some people, so give me uh, an evening time. And, and in the end, we settled for Monday at 8 p.m. Um, on 27th <coughs> this month. And I made a, a Facebook event, and it's 1,200 people interested. And there are still two weeks uh, until the event. And I didn't make any uh, you know, promotion or boosting or, or anything. So really. It, it almost, I, I could say, it's almost like a, a cult documentary in, in Romania. So it's going really, really well, and people screen it everywhere. It's been screened in exhibitions, in um, all sorts of events, not only in, um, in, uh, in film festivals or in cinemas. 
And uh, it's been screened, fortunately, I would say, in places like Petrila. So some people who are trying to save, um, for example, Rocha Montana, or uh, maybe you've heard of it, because it, it prompted to really huge protests a couple of years ago when they, when they wanted to dig out gold there and destroy the, the, the town. Um, or other places like, like that. So they, they consider it to be an example of what could be done and of, uh, of social activism through art, which is funny. And what do you think? What is uh, the secret of this film? Is it more um, effective than, for example, for the other protests for Roger Montana? Well, I think protest is effective no matter how it's done. So, um, I was lucky enough to find a, a guy who protests through probably the most original ways you can think of. Um, but it is a form of protest and I think the film is encouraging for protest no matter the form. So I don't know if it's more effective or not. I mean, um, I think you have a lot of reasons to protest in Hungary as well as as we have in, in Romania, and I think we should do it, no matter how, making films, making events, going out on the streets, sometimes blocking the roads, even though the police doesn't like it, you know, but if you just sit on the sidewalk quietly and you protest, they, I don't know if the voice and the message is heard. So sometimes maybe you, you got to invent something new. Okay, and... Uh what do you consider yourself? Is a director or an activist or both in this case? Um, I was asked this question when I was uh, in a workshop while I was making the film. I, are you, if I am <coughs> an activist or a director, and I'm definitely both. So, um, even though I documented in an objective way, so to speak, um, I actually used the Facebook page of the film, which was really popular before even the film was finished. Um, it, it, my, my Facebook page was more popular than any uh, local newspaper or television or anything. So what I would post on, on the Facebook page would immediately um, go around really fast. So I could uh, gather people for Barbu's events through through Planeta Petrila, the Facebook page. Uh, and if needed, I could have, you know, prompted to, to real protests, I think. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thoughts. It's okay. <laughs> so you are both. And what do you think it's been happen? Uh, um, also this, the same activity in Hungary, in, uh, for example, for an industrial um, building that can change uh, for a cultural center? It would be nice to see that example, but I think in that level of protestation and activism, I haven't met, but uh, in Dunai Város, which is the, the um, iron, where is the iron factory, there is a really vivid uh, contemporary art life thing to the factory too. They had an iron uh, factory workshop and so on. Uh, the factory is now in an Ukrainian uh, ownership and I think they closed, they, I'm, I'm sure they closed the, the uh, iron workshop and they didn't start anything with their past, with their collection. It was two years ago when I visited because I heard that there is a, a factory archive and uh, we went there and uh, there was a fantastic collection of the history with the uh, with, uh, documentary objects and history of the, of the iron work and if the workers there were just sent in a certain moment because the coffee cups were there, uh, the computers were like running and uh, the calendars were, op were open. So it was like in a, in, 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 in a story like you told in the film, I don't know the English name, Chipka Rojeka. So everything was like this, uh, this, this uh, dream, I don't know for how, for how long. So it would be really good to see how can evoke a place uh, for another reason, for another purpose. Uh, I don't know, this is not on that, that stage. But my question would be, who, what was first? The city, Petrila, or the mine workers, 
or or the guy? Well, first there was the mine, <laughs> as any mining town, and um, um, around the mine, then the city got built and got bigger and bigger as uh, they were digging out for more coal. So this was actually the first mine in the first coal mine in Romania. It's the oldest, Petrila. Um, and then it became one of the deepest in Europe, with uh, 1,000 meters. Um, the, the town developed around the mine, so there was nothing there before. It was just uh, villages. Um, and um, during the 90s, it was really, I think, around uh, 4,000 people working only in Petrila mine, but there are more mines in the area. It's called Valle Giuli. It's a whole area that uh, doesn't have any other industry or economy uh, but the coal digging. And there are still four mines who are still working. Um, but all of them are being shut down soon. So it's really a sad situation. And um, Barbu, um, he came from a, from a family um, that used to work at the mine, engineers, and so a little bit higher uh, class family. And then he was a topographer and a photographer at the mine. Um, he became famous for his caricatures, so he um, was making uh, caricatures for main newspapers in Romania. Um, and I think this is why he left the mine. So he already had the income as an artist, as a caricature artist. So he left the mine after 15 years of working as a, as a topographer. Yeah, it was good to see that there is a guy who is a topographer, let's say intellectual. His perspective was a little bit outside, but he created, so he's a hilarious guy, and he created with the typography, with the, with the graphics style, really a uh, really solid and like, monolith and effective but style, or I don't know how to, to express words. And he could really, people, take in well, you know, some, the circle. I, I would say most of people in Petrila don't get so much his work. I mean, especially these uh, Picasso quotes, you know, and other, uh, other re remixes of famous art. But they like that it's colorful, you know, and it's... <laughs> yes, that uh, wanted to ask that the community there, the, the people can mm -hmm. recognize the importance of this uh, film and this, his art, how he can help them, for example. Well, um, so before the film was finished, I felt that he is an outsider of the community, so he would have always uh, the same people coming to, to his events. Um, and I, I, I thought it's not a very broad audience in the in the town, but that it's uh, a few families that uh, keep coming every every time. Um, I think the film changed that, and not only the film, but um, I think this uh, ceremony um, that you see in the film of of, of burying the the coal, um, the mine's burial, the, the mine's funeral, as as he calls it. Uh, I think this was the first event when actually people from the mine came, like Chenusha, the, the brigadier, and his miners were all there. And uh, it was a moment when they, they kind of joined forces, and, and th everybody was talking. I had, um, I had the lavalier microphone on Chenusha and uh, one on Barbu, and uh, I could listen to the conversation that went on all night, even when I wasn't uh, shooting. Um, and uh, everybody was saying, okay, mine is closed, but now we have to fight to save the buildings, to save the memory, to save the history. So it was in this moment when the community came together with Barbu. And uh, as about the film, uh, the first screening in, in Romania, the, the film premiered in Amsterdam in Itfa uh, exactly one year ago, uh, on 19th of uh, November, so we have to celebrate uh, on Sunday. Um, it was a world premiere there, and but then the first screening in Romania um, was uh, on 4th of June um, this year, and uh, basically all the town came. 
I mean, it was amazing. We, we, we also organized the photo exhibition with my photos and um, we brought in the screen and the projector and the, all the equipment and the team of uh, technicians and photographers and uh, we invited a lot of uh, friends and uh, architects and guests. So it was really like a huge festival in, in Petrila and um, some people were left outside so uh, they have this huge uh, hall, uh, it's, called a, it's called the Cultural Palace or something like that, Casa de Cultura, um, that is used for political uh, meetings or sometimes maybe um, in, in, before Christmas for uh, Christmas concerts. But the town hasn't seen any film screening almost ever. I mean, probably during communist when, when you had this uh, cinema caravan coming from town to town, they, they had some film screening. But this was the first screening in, in over 20 years. And it was just amazing. And um, um, Barbu asked me before the screening to remove this bit when, when he swears at the mayor and the local council. <laughs> And in fact, I, I did it. I think it's his right, you know, to... And I, 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 I cut that piece, I exported a new version of the film, but in the end, by mistake, I put the, the full version. And, um, and we were sitting in front of the stage because we, there were no seats left, so we were just standing um, in the corner. And uh, I, I realized before that scene, oops, I... I and I told him, and, and he was sure I did it on purpose. But the, the reaction to that was so amazing that everybody uh, applauded and uh, cheered. It was really a very uh, noisy screening. Like everybody was cheering during the film and applauding during the film and even booing um, during the film at, at the bad guys, of course. So it was really amazing. And um, well, I think both Barbu and Chenusha, the miner, and myself are kind of uh, superstars in Petrila now. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. And how was after the film? So we saw the first step that uh, the building can remain. And after, what happened? Um, well, the one thing that happened is that the community is much more aware of the mine. The mayor uh, is thinking of moving the, the town hall into the administrative building of the mine, um, which would be really good. And um, other than that, things, not many things happened. They just finished uh, demolishing what, what they were allowed to demolish. And now I, I, this, I, I came from there yesterday. So um, they are putting uh, fresh ground on the ground, and then they would plant uh, some plants, <laughs> uh, grass. Um, the thing is, um, by the end of the year, the Ministry of Energy should give these buildings to the local administration, because only the local administration can then make projects to get money to convert them and to, to do something with them. But um, one, um, I was surprised of you uh, telling the steel uh, factory story that you found everything as it was in Petrila. Um, there are a lot of people who live out of uh, scrap iron and out of basically stealing everything they can. So in, if you leave the mine uh, without uh, surveillance for two days, I think everything will disappear. Bricks from the walls, uh, windows, scrap iron, uh, uh, everything. So this is really a really uh, biggest danger now, that if the Ministry of Energy finishes the, the, um, their activity, basically. So the mine, the mine still exists on paper. It has one manager and four women secretaries and stuff. But it still is, exists as an as a entity. But this will stop at the end of the year. And this is when the local uh, administration would take over the mine. But if they don't immediately pay uh, for a security company to secure the perimeter, everything will be destroyed in a few days. So this is a real danger. And what's happened with this money that they had to uh, use for the demolition, for example? They managed to spend it. <laughs> so 
I read in the in, I read in a local <coughs> newspaper that also I don't know if you noticed, but when they talk uh, in 2013, there are 10 million euros, and then when they talk in 2016, that's one of the last things I shot this visit uh, at the mine. Uh, it, it's 8.5 million euros. So even uh, some money got uh, lost on the way. But I read in the local newspaper that they finished demolitions and they, they are finishing now the ecologi ecologization of the, um, of the site and that it, everything costs uh, 10 million euros. So I, I don't understand how the demolitions were, you know, out of 100%. I think they demolished 20% but still it cost 100%, so. Maybe also this is a man of the arts. Yes, it's an uh, art that uh, yeah. Romanian politicians are very good at spending money without doing anything. Uh, not only in Romania. <laughs> okay, and um, just an institutional question that, uh, um, according to the film, the cultural ministry interfered quite late, in the late phase, in this mind story. How come that the, the monument uh, officers uh, didn't make any attention to the mine, to the mine buildings? Because you thought that, that was the oldest mine uh, in Romania. Um, this is a, a little more complicated answer. Um, you probably heard that we had, um, in the same day the mine closed, we had a, a huge tragedy in Bucharest. Uh, a club fire where uh, 65 people died um, and this prompted to protests that brought down the government. Um, for one year we had a new government that was made out of non-political people and this new government that was in um, from December 2015 uh, for one year made a lot of good things in Romania and one of them was um, giving the, um, the monument status to the buildings of Petri Lama. So I, I can say that if that uh, government wouldn't have uh, uh, resigned after this uh, club tragedy, um, the buildings for sure would not have uh, been given a, a, a monument status because um, there was huge, um, huge pressure from the local administration, from the mayor, mm -hmm. to not give this status. So, um, so I, I can say that some. This is one of the good things that came out from this uh, terrible tragedy that we had. Thank you. That's really useful. But I think we we can open the discussion. If anyone has a question. Yeah, please. I'm just, I'm just wondering, uh, hi, first of all, uh, congratulations for such a great movie, Thank you. Um, no, it's okay. Thank you. Um, it was a great story and a great celebration of life in a story that is related to the death of an important, to a tragic story in a way. Uh, so really congratulations for that. And I was just uh, really one simple question, what happened to the, is that a museum? Is it functioning now as well in the... Um, the, the museum you see in the film is actually a, a, dif a different building that does not belong to the mine. And um, <laughs> it's strange things. Yeah, it's I, 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 we, talked, we talked bad about politics and this is what's happening. <laughs> um, but... Um, there are buildings that are very, very easy to convert into museums. Um, there is the, there is a, besides the mine, there is a mining school. And this, uh, this building is one that I sent, if, if I have uh, people writing me on Facebook, hey, I watched the movie and I want to visit Petrila. And I say, yeah, go call Barbu or Cenusha and they will take you to the mine as well. So there are a few buildings that are unofficially uh, open for visits, um, but we hope that next year when the buildings would uh, be owned by the uh, local administration, they would be open because there, 
part, part of it is part of the buildings are complicated. I mean, you know, to, to make sure that they are secure, that there's no piece falling uh, from the ceiling and so on, it, that's complicated. But part of them, and this, uh, especially this um, um, school of qualification, as it is called, it's very easy to, to become a museum. Um, besides those, there is this Centre Pompadou, which is part of the mine, so it's one of the, the mine's buildings that is, um, in a way, has been given to Barbu, so he has a key and he can open it and he can organize his events there. But other than that, it's, uh, it's, it's a work to be done. Okay, so he's committed to that idea? I hope so. I think he's getting tired and he's quite famous, he's invited everywhere now, so I hope he will not give up. Okay, thank you. First of all, uh, great congratulations uh, for making this film. It was sheer marvelous. Uh, my question would be, how uh, uh, have you become committed to this topic uh, and uh, sacrificing so much of your time to uh, preserving industrial cultural heritage and uh, uh, making uh, uh, well-known the activity of this person? And later, I would like uh, to comment to you. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I knew Johan Barbo through his caricatures. So as I said, he is quite famous caricature artist, um, especially in the times when, when we had the printed newspapers, which we don't uh, so much anymore, but where he had like front page caricature in, in the main uh, newspaper, printed newspaper. Um, and then uh, I met him um, while I was making a documentary about the NGO that I was volunteering for. So he was also a volunteer there. He, he had some little insta art installations at the NGO. And when I was making a film about them, I interviewed him. And um, I found him to be very funny, first of all. So I really liked him as a, as a person and as a character. And um, he also told me about Petrila. And uh, I found out that he was organizing uh, an arts festival with music and theater in his backyard in Petrila, for example. <laughs> so I was curious to see it, but I had never been in the area, in this mining area. It's very uh, far from uh, <coughs> my hometown or from Bucharest. Um, and one time I, I was just in the area and I, uh, I gave him a call and I visited him. And um, I was planning just to see the town and spend uh, two days there a weekend. And I could say I was really fascinated by the mine. So, you, you know, I imagine that the coal mine is a hole in the ground and that's it. But then you, you see in this wide shots in the film that the mining co complex is actually bigger than the whole town. I mean, it's very... Um, impressive with all these conveyor belts and all these towers and buildings. And I, I really wanted to photograph this, this uh, industrial landscape. <coughs> um, and I was actually surprised to find out that the mine still works because it looked like it's been deserted for years. Some demolitions were already going on. There was one, uh, <coughs> one building that was half demolished and half was standing. It looked really strange. Um, and then Barbu told me that um, the, the mine is still working and that they will uh, shut it down in uh, 2015 and that they want to uh, erase everything, to demolish and plant grass in, instead of the mine. And he was very um, upset by this plan. So he said, I, I will be organizing, I will be uh, organizing a um, meeting with architects, and with student architects to show these uh, stupid authorities that what they could do with these buildings. Um, and this took place right in the next week from my visit. So I stayed um, to shoot this uh, workshop and this uh, uh, proposing of alternatives. At the time, I, I think I stayed mostly because um, I wanted to join the cause. So as Barbu was upset when he told me about it, I thought really it's really stupid to, to demolish this uh, mine. 
that, that is the, the history of the town, the identity of the town, and all these towers, these beautiful towers, why, why should they be demolished? Okay, the mine is closing, but why? So I think my first inst instinct was uh, the activist, and then the, the, the filmmaker came in uh, later. That was your question. Uh, I was uh, very pleased to hear that you found so much things deserved in Duna Vilaros, but uh, I found uh, on the internet a uh, short documentary made by amateur filmmakers that uh, huge uh, uh, machines are rotting in the woods uh, around uh, Duna Vilaros. Uh, so, uh, I have bad experiences, and I was happy to listen to your good experiences. And my bad experience to others that in the Warsaw, the industrial district, uh, practically um, nothing has been preserved and left, and it was uh, an awfully <coughs> nice territory, and there were no uh, movements to, to preserve that. And uh, one positive moment that uh, this place is one of the first uh, 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 good results uh, preserving industrial uh, buildings in Budapest, I mean this transformator house, but uh, uh, last year nobody was uh, protesting when that huge and nice industrial building was pulled down in <laughs> yes. uh, uh, close to the Millennium Park. Yes. So, yeah. You are absolutely right. And we, I could attach more places like Komlo, for example, Stefan's mine. It stands there, rotten, empty, hopeless. <coughs> and I know a photographer, Laszlo Lukosi Luko, he did a last uh, shot of this mine. And uh, short beforehand, the uh, Academy for Fine Arts students from Page went there for a summer. Uh, workshop. So that was the last time that the mine was used for artistic uh, reasons. Yeah, the, the scene is very sad and Dunai Varus is an example and uh, the art historian talked out of me and I, I didn't mention, I didn't thought on the, on the mach machines and the, and the huge stuff. I mentioned the archive and the collection, the, the memory of the factory history. Uh, this is untouched, and uh, it's, it's still waiting for the for the research and for presentation uh, too. But this whole this whole story of the mind and behind that memory activity, it's really s is a high interesting topic of filmmaking and artistic activity. And maybe you should show the film to more and people that could that could. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's really good that. We saw now a happy end story. And it, I think it was really sharp what you mentioned uh, with the political change, for a temporary political change. What can, in, in a really short, short time, can things turn? Yeah, but down. then, you know, going back to this, <coughs> after this tragedy and um, after having an uh, actual. Uh, people who run the country without politics, you know, I, I expected young people would turn out to vote and change the power, but after one year we got back to the same party and the same people, mm -hmm. so unfortunately not, not a good outcome. But in this one year a lot of good things happened. Um, some were even cancelled by the, like for example there, there was a, a new law of cinematography, so fi financing films was totally re rethought um, involving the people who are making the films, involving producers and accountants who are making films, and then they had a new law for, for cinema uh, making in Romania, and when the, the political party came back to power, they just cancelled that. So, And I, I'm afraid that they are trying to do this with, with the buildings as well, and I, I uh, from what I know, um, they can do it after five years. So. Uh, the, they cannot touch the buildings for five years, but if in five years uh, nothing happens to them, they can um, basically rethink the monument status <coughs> and they can reevaluate the, the state in which the buildings are. So if, the, if the, the, there's nothing done there, um, they could uh, overturn this as well. So, but 
Fadila had a good chance to change their identity a little bit and uh, find a new way to survive. I, I think even, uh, even the film puts a lot of pressure on, on the local authorities. So I think um, even the film helps in, in this regard. So if, if the film wouldn't exist now, I think the mayor would have forgot about the monuments and would, would not want to, uh, to take over the buildings or, or he would, if, if he doesn't have a choice, he would take over the buildings but maybe not guard, guard them and then they would get self-demolished as, as I explained uh, earlier because the people would steal the bricks from it. Um, I think that the existence of the film and, and the fact that um, we, I keep posting photos um, and I keep going there and I, I, I keep the Facebook page alive um, and the fact that people actually come. Um, I, I know a group of students who wanted to visit a week ago and then they were allowed to go through the mine. Um, they, they, they cannot do anything, any wrong movement right now, you know, because all eyes are on them. The film is really popular. TV crews came to, to, to do reportages of the film. Even Vice did uh, a little film about it. Uh, just yesterday, a new, uh, a new uh, team came to make a short film uh, about Petrila and about the uh, historical um, buildings. So th there's a lot of things happening. And I think this is what keeps the building, uh, the building safe for now. Uh, yes, but what do you think? Why, how long can we take this uh, attention on what we are? Well, I think now really the, the, the next thing we are watching is what the, the mayor will do when he takes over the buildings. And I, I, I have friends who were, are thinking of organizing workshops there. Um, I myself, you know, could organize a small film festival there. So there are many ni initiatives that would find a good home in these buildings, in this complex. In, but of course, if everything is safe and if the, the mayor understands this. I, I, I know Barbu met with the mayor and he, and he said, you know, you have elections in two years. <laughs> Do you want to uh, be reelected? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, he... he the mayor changed, so actually the, ma the mayor that Barbu is swearing in the film got changed. Mm -hmm. He was a mayor since 88 <laughs> uh, until 2016. So uh, now it's a new guy, and, but he hasn't done anything since he, since he was elected. And now Barbu is putting some pressure on him. And he even he used one of my photos in his uh, flyers to, to get elected. You know, without asking permission. <laughs> so I can always say, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, there is hope. But we, we just, we are waiting for this step, which is really important, that the buildings don't belong to the Ministry of Energy anymore, but they go to the local community, basically. And as I remember, someone wanted to ask, Um, yeah, I would like to ask you something about your motivation, because now you are saying that your image, your movie is important now in, in Petrila for also decision-making. decision, decision making. And I wanted to ask you if you could imagine it at the beginning when you started, like if you were considering your movie and your work as part of this fight, or maybe it was just documenting what was happening. Well, I think um, I think I I ran my own fight through the Facebook page mostly. Um, I I thought at the time that the that my film will finish with the last demolition. So I didn't actually believe that they will succeed in uh, in, uh, in in getting the demolitions cancelled. Um, I joined as an activist, but I, uh, as a filmmaker, I, I, I was more objective, and I imagined that the end, of, the end of the project would be with demolitions. Fortunately, it, uh, it was uh, changed to a happy end. But uh, yeah, so I did my activist part, but I was also doing my filmmaker, and then fortunately, I was 
uh, able to put them together because there was a happy ending. Yeah, and like this experience, um, it made you reconsider your work as a filmmaker? Like, as I understand, like at the beginning you were more skeptical about what was, what was happening, and then you have a work that is also held in the community, right? So I'm wondering if it made you change your consideration of your work. Well, um, I have been, since uh, the, since the Rosha Montana protests a few years ago, I have been uh, photographing or uh, recording protests um, around the country and sometimes my my short videos or my photo albums got really viral so um, I was doing this before I uh, went to Petrila and I, I have done it even after I finished uh, uh, Petrila the film um, most recently in um, January when we again had biggest protests ever in Romania because the politicians voted for uh, politicians not to be, um, for basically for corruption not to be criminalized. <laughs> it's amazing. And they did it at night. And we, we took the streets at night, just watching news and then everybody organizing on Facebook and spontaneously protesting. Um, and then especially in, in this kind of protests, you know, um, and I was, I was never in, or, or I was not in Bucharest, I was in Cluj, you know, when, where there are not so many photographers, so kind of, they can minimalize it, you know, say that there, there were 500 people when in fact there were 5,000. So I felt the need to, to give an image, to put an image, to put a number on the protests. And I, I managed to do this several times in, in different cities also. Um, and I, I will keep doing that, you know. But uh, I don't think my, my next film would be a, an activist one. Still see, I still see things separately, you know. I just need a good subject and I, I can be a good filmmaker without being an activist if the subject doesn't fit. Okay. <coughs> I wanted to ask you where to be the next film, but <laughs> you told us that it's not an activist. Um, I, w I will not say too much, just that it's, uh, out I, my first film, Constantin and Elena, was about my grandparents. <coughs> my second film was about the miners and the young Bargu, which uh, is not related to me. And I can say my third film will be even my most personal yet, so that's it. <laughs> so we are waiting for the next film? Yes, 2019. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> have it. <laughs>